Hi guys, the next thing you're going to be listening to is an audio file only. I did it with a fellow named Will Barron in the United Kingdom. Um, I think it's a great podcast interview, and I wanted to get it to you as fast as possible. So it's audio only. My apologies, but I think it's worth listening to, okay? Get on a run with you anyway. You'll have fun, and it'll make the time go fast. Bye-bye. Good, and welcome to the Salesman Podcast. Hi there, Will. Thank you for having me today. You are more than welcome, sir. And today, well, we've got quite a lot of stuff to get through today. Um, I've been diving through your YouTube videos. We'll link to a couple in the show notes as well over at salesman.red. But the first thing I want to ask about is something that comes up quite often when I'm speaking with salespeople that are looking to up their game, essentially. And this is something I noticed with you, and we talked about it just pre-show then when you are doing these uh, live sales calls on YouTube and we're going to touch on Periscope and Meerkat and if you do anything like that on th- there as well in a second. But you always seem to have a massive grin on your face. You seem to be really enjoying the call and, and the sales process. Is that something, is that a state that you get yourself in before you make the call so you're more successful on it? Or is that just how you are naturally? That's my nature. Um I love, I am the luckiest man in the world. I'm, uh, I'm doing exactly what I should be doing, teaching people sales because I'm the former world's worst salesman, truth be told. I love what I'm doing. I make a great living. I don't have to take vacations. I live them uh, thanks to all this wonderful technology. I can work from home. I really enjoy what I'm doing. I go to bed and the bills are paid. And to me, that was one of my primary goals, not to worry about money anymore and sales. God bless it. Sales was, as I always often say, is the million dollar skill. I'm happy because I'm doing what I love. I have passion for it. Okay. So if someone is listening now and they're in a sales role and perhaps they're not passionate about it mm-hmm. or perhaps they're not as excited, because I love it as well. Obviously, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be doing the show if I didn't. But would you say that it's possible to get passionate about it? They're selling the, pro- the wrong product in the first place and there's always something that you would automatically be passionate about. Yeah, and is the methodology just to get that excitement? Because I really enjoy watching your videos. Thank you. And it's part of it is because you're you're really excited and uh, you know charismatic and, and a good guy to watch on there. Well, you know, part of the you know we'll get into the marketing in a while, in a while. But sales to most people, I hated sales. Will can I should I tell the truth or should I lie for the podcast? <laughs> no, tell the truth. And I then abs- I, this might come on to what you're going to say here, but <laughs> I want you to tell us a little bit why you mentioned you were the worst salesman then. Yeah, I tell us a little it. bit about that in this story as well. Sales to me was getting in front of prospects with pre- with with products and services that I was not passionate about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and feeling embarrassed, humiliated, and rejected. I felt a lot of times like I was in a shopping mall in front of the Santa Claus at Christmas time with my pants falling around my ankles. It was horrible. It was humiliating. Uh, it was a lot of rejection, and I don't care what a lot of the motivational gurus say and everything. Getting uh, getting told no all day long, getting rejected, getting hung up on the phone, getting people who have made a prejudgment on you all day long, because you don't have a system, because you're not assertive, because you don't love what you're selling or believe in it, it's not fun. And sales, uh, you know, to me, more, more people, what do people do when they don't have a job? They get another sales job. Mm. We've got to find the passion. We've got to find the product or service we believe in. We have to have a system in sales that teaches us how to control the process, not only our own behavior, but that of the prospect. We have to have, uh, you know, um, we got to believe in what we're doing and have fun on the way to the bank. Okay, so let's dive into the process that you mentioned then. Then, So controlling the sale, controlling the phone call, and being assertive is all things that I've picked up on from when I've worked with salespeople that are better than me. But And tell me if you agree with this, Claude. It, the things that aren't generally taught in most sales books, most sales books are a bit fluffy and telling you to be super consultative and being there for the customer, which is all important. Mm -hmm. But I've never, I can't think off the top of my head, other than the work that you do, perhaps, that there's any sales book or a course or anything that tells you to man up slightly, get on with it. And if you believe in your product, you shouldn't be shoving down the customer's prospect's neck by any means, but you should be giving them a, a real fair opportunity to learn all about it before perhaps they have a chance to throw a rejection at you. 
you know, the thing about sales is scale, sales is a science and it's an art. We have to study the science of psychology, of persuasion. Why should some, I ask myself the question every day, why should someone buy from me? I'm a secret. May, many people have never heard of Claude Diamond or gone to ClaudeDiamond.com or my YouTube area. Did you see that segue, by the way, Will? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is sales is a skill. It's an art and a science. We have to to be good at anything. What's your favorite sport, Will? Uh, basketball. Basketball. What happens if you stop playing basketball for three months? You suck at it. Yeah. Sales is the exact same thing. I love information on sales. I love books. I love seminars. I love podcasts like yours. I listen to it all the time. But you know what? To be good at anything, you have to practice consistently. You have to practice every day. You have to have a system in sales where you understand the behaviors of both yourself and the prospect. You have to learn to be comfortable, to have fun at sales. I am the only sales trainer in the world that I know of, Will, that the gut sales system is about having fun on the way to the bank. I love people. I, you know, we call the prospect a prospect, like there's some uh, Darth Vader person, okay, <laughs> the, the evil prospect uh, who I have to overcome, overwhelm. They're a person just like you and I are. They want good value. They want products and services that solve their problems, that solve their issues, that give them good customer service. All we have to do is have a system like guts. Guts is a system about learning to ask questions with, pers uh, with stroking and nurturing, getting into likable conversations with people so that they like you. Hopefully, eventually, they trust you. God, the magic T word. And what I look to do is have enough leads, speak to enough people on a consistent basis, ask them questions. And I set up what we call three steps, an agenda, a qualification, and the third step is the commitment close. I have a three-minute timer on my desk that I give to all my mentees, people I train. I train one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. And what I do is I say, in three minutes, you should have a pretty good idea, three minutes or less. Is this a prospect or is this an utter waste of time? So we have to have a system. We have to practice that system. And we have to be confident and so that we're having a good time while we're selling our product or service. I'm sorry, that was a mouthful. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. So how important then is it for the salesperson to be not necessarily aggressive, but assertive to take control of the conversation and and to, to go through those steps? Because when I get cold called, which is quite often as, as the podcast grows and as the website and the platform grows, people are constantly trying to sell me different software and different marketing tools to do different things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time they'll ring up and be like, you know, hi, who am I speaking to? So I'll give them, uh, you know, the benefit of the doubt and explain, oh, I'd love to talk to you about this. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm, I'm instantly bored. They haven't qualified me. They don't really know who I am. And they've got no control of the conversation. I've got the control of, you know, the next couple of words you say, I'm probably just going to, well, no, I don't hang up, but I say I'm not interested and then hang up. So how important is it for the salesperson? And then we can dive into how they can do it. But how important is it for the salesperson to be assertive? Listen, it's it's okay. I think uh, assertive is not a dirty word, uh, first of all. But there's a difference between being assertive and being a bully or overwhelming people. We we all get cold calls. When I get a call, most cold calls are rejected, 99%. I don't even know how they find these people to do cold calls because they have no savoir faire. They have no charisma. They don't know how to be creative and get to a prospect so that the prospect pays attention, the prospect shows an interest in, in what you're selling. We've got to learn how to talk to people. You go to a restaurant anywhere in London, Will, and you see two people, a couple, an old couple or a young couple on the, in the dining room, and they're both holding their phones texting other people. They're not talking. They're not engaging in a conversation. My goal initially is to introduce myself to, to, get, uh, to get them to like me. Uh, one of my favorite books, I know you often ask people about their books, is uh, uh, Dr. C uh, uh, Cialdini, uh, uh, the, uh, the Psychology of Persuasion in Sales and Business. And I think likability. Don't we go to restaurants where everyone knows our name, where people, where, we, where they greet us, they say, hello, Will, hello, Claude. Don't, we want to engage people. So there's a certain amount of acting ability. I think we need to be a thespian to be a great salesperson. I bet you never heard that on your podcast. <laughs> and dive into that a little bit further, Claude. Why is that? Is this a case of um, 
faking it till you make it? <laughs> or is it a case of you have to, you know, bend your personality slightly to make a better impression with the prospect? What do you mean by that? I, I think we need to make a connection. A lot of sales training talk about bonding and rapport. And most of them are, are transparent. They're phony. You've got to be a great actor. I was telling you before the podcast, my daughter is a thespian, an actor, and she studied in London. And um, the thing about it is it's not to be disingenuous or manipulative, but to make that prospect say, hey, this is a nice guy or girl. I like this person. I want to talk to him. I want to get some information from them. I trust them. We have to learn how to engage people in a conversation. And you know what? I will take on a role. I will flip a little, a little magic switch. If, and I will talk to Will. If Will likes basketball, I'll try to find something in the back of my brain about basketball or ask him about me if he's ever seen Magic Johnson or something like that. You know, I will try to relate to you in some way. And great salesmen know how to make a connection. Did you ever go to a place where somebody walks into a party and instantly they're engaging people in conversation? The, mm-hmm. um, uh, sir, uh, what is it, the um, introvert versus the extrovert? Uh, type salesperson. I do believe the squeaky wheel does get the grease. I do believe that we have to engage people, have to talk to them, have to make them feel good. We call it stroking, nurturing, and empathy. What are they feeling? And this is the talent of acting or creating an environment so that they're comfortable enough to maybe share information and we can find out, is this someone I can do business with today? Because I'm all gut system is all about today. Okay, so this idea of report then. So other people and other and then sales gurus will go through all these deep, uh, deep setted processes and, yeah. and and you know mid- yeah. mirroring body language. I hate and, that. I, I do and, not. I I see a salesman across. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, but if I see a salesman who folds his arm when I fold my arms across his legs, I'm thinking this guy is trying to manipulate me, and he's obvious, and he's using some kind of uh, I forget the name of the process. Uh, the mirroring uh, things. Uh, what is it? Werner Erhardt and Est and all that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's too obvious. And most people are pretty sharp today. They've been around the block. And the, what happens when someone says, oh, my God, I'm talking to a salesman? What do they do? Well, and we probably do it as well, Claude. You put up a, a barrier because you, you think that they're trying to get something off you. Did Will or Claude wake up this morning and say, oh, boy, I hope a life insurance salesman called? <laughs> of course not, no. <laughs> no, nobody wants to meet a salesperson. But people love people. People love to engage people, have conversation. And you know what? If we have a good product or service that we believe in, we can segue to that or we can introduce ourselves or we can make a connection and ask questions that relate to that product or service. But if you come on like a bull in a china shop to somebody – just like these cold callers and these uh, robot cold callers. That stuff is so old school and so it's horrible. I don't know how they get anybody to do that stuff because the results, the ROI is horrible. Okay, then, Claude. So from your perspective, then, is this just a natural thing that you're good at of building report naturally people? Or is there a process that you go through when you get someone on the phone? You know, when I get somebody on the phone, it depends. I, I believe there's three tiers to leads. There's the hot leads or warmly, uh, the hot leads that we love. And they co- that comes through marketing. Uh, mm-hmm. By the way, I spend no money. I have all the leads I need, and I spend absolutely no money on marketing if we want to talk about that, if we have time. I get warm leads. We love the warm leads because we're getting back to the person. Every salesperson loves that. Then we have the lukewarm leads, I call it. We have a CRM system where we follow up with the prospect we spoke to six months ago, and we got a little bing on our computer from Evernote or whatever pod, uh, system we use. And uh, uh, it reminds us to call back Mr. and Mrs. Smith and touch base with them again. Then we have the cold calls. And these are the three tiers that keep me very busy speaking to people. The cold call. I'm going to call up and I might be a little creative. You want to do a role play real quick? Do you ever do that on your show? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. Say hello. You say, uh, let's pretend you, you have a house for sale and you've never, and you, you've never heard of me. Okay. Say hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? It certainly is. Yes, sir. My name is Claude Diamond. I have your number in front of me. How can I help you? 
Uh, I'm not sure, Claude. You just called me, mate. Yes, I did. That's very good. Um, you did, this isn't about. A lot of people call me about real estate. You don't have something for sale, or you're uh, for sale, or looking to buy something from me, are you? Uh, yeah, I have a house for sale at the moment. That's and it's sold already, isn't it, sir? No, it's not. Oh, it's not. Um, my name once again is Claude Diamond. I'm looking for a property in that area. Can you mind if we? Um, mind if I ask you a few questions? If if it's not inconvenient. Of course not. Thank you, sir. Boom. See, off the role play, Will. Did you see? Now, what did, did you ever hear a salesperson call you up and say, why am I calling you? Or is, is this your number? <laughs> We've got Does to be it, a little creative. That, that obviously works in that situation. Is that not, and I, I and this is a, um, you, you will probably know what my thoughts are on this before I ask the question, but <laughs> is that not a risky move? And and is that risk really worth it? In my mind, it is worth it for the occasional blowback. Let me but get, let do you me, know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying with that? Yeah, I know. Let me let me share something with you and your audience. Three words: sales is dangerous. <laughs> no, no, it's not even that, Claude. Sales <laughs> should be dangerous, and people, <laughs> in my opinion, most of the time, play it way too uh, soft. And the the, the uh, I'm I'm trying to. I think there's a there is a line here between being aggressive and and be coming across like a, a cock. Uh, oh and, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. But I, my... I, and tell me if you agree with this, Claude. I, yeah. I think people don't get close enough to that line, and I think people lose a lot of business when the people they, they ring up and the first thing the prospect says is, "I'm not interested." A lot of people will give up there, and there's still a low to go at in that situation. Here's the thing that where I probably differentiate from 99% of the people you interview. I think the salesman comes first. I believe in giving unbelievable value. I believe in selling good products, doing business honestly. That's a given. Everybody says the same old thing. But I think if the salesman doesn't protect his ego, his confidence, if he has to be creative when he speaks to people and get their attention, first of all, gain their interest and hope to segue to a conversation like you and I just did in that role play. If I call you up like the other 99 and 9 tenths percent of the people, my rejection rate goes through the roof. And how do you feel when you ask a pretty girl to dance and she says no, Will? Uh, it's never happened to me. Oh, of course not. <laughs> it's happened a lot of times to me, okay, because I don't know, I, I, I didn't do it the right way or something like that. I don't know. But the thing about it is when we get too much rejection in sales, we feel horrible, truth be told. And we have to be much more creative and inventive, not to be manipulative or disingenuous, but in to engage people in a way that they're off balance or maybe they did. Gee, you know, if you call people up on the phone, Will, and you sound like everybody else, why would you expect different results? You're, you're just going to get rejected all day long, and then you're going to quit your job and look for another sales job and another sales job. We have to protect ourselves. We have to have a system. We have to understand the art and science of persuasion with guts. By the way, do you know what GUT stands for? Uh, I've got it written down here, but tell us. Great, untraditional, unorthodox techniques of sales and success. Okay, I want people to understand that sales is fun. It is the million dollar skill, but you have to practice it. You have to learn a system and you have to do it in a, such a way that you get the results you want. Like the other, you know, the, we, you, I've heard your show and you talk about the Pareto rule, the 80-20 rule. But tw how do you get to be one of the 20%? How do you get to be someone who loves what he does, makes a great living at it, and doesn't get, the, doesn't get the feeling of rejection and depression all the time like so many people in sales get, truth be told? Well, the only way you're going to get in the 20% is by not doing what the 80% do. Amen, brother. <laughs> and I love this concept of the salesman comes first. I've written this down as something to dive into and, a little and, bit more. And I know people and, are going to take it the wrong way. And I don't mean to cheat people or pressure them or, or any of that. I mean that I think most people in business, most entrepreneurs are good people. Okay, maybe I've got rose-colored glasses on, but I think they believe in their company, they believe in their product, they work hard, they want to pay their bills, take care of their family, and then they go out totally unprepared for the rejection from the prospects who have been inundated by salespeople all day long. Well, I think this is just a, a thing that's common in society in general for whatever reason. There's probably loads of um, reasons and, and upbringing and, and media that affects this, but... The, you should be looking out for yourself and obviously your family oh, and your thank friends. You. You're going but to my church the, now, buddy. Uh, but the salesman comes first. That that as a as a sentence. 
is really powerful because you're not in work to make you're not working as a salesperson to make other people on the other end of the phone uh, you know particularly happy obviously if you've got someone on the other end, on the other end of the phone is happy to speak to you then the more likely to buy from you in it and it's win win and all that but you're there to sell stuff amen and i think that gets lost in yeah. a, a lot of occasions exactly why are we in business will Truth we're, be we're told, here to make money. That's the, we're, that is we're, literally we're, the only un, unless you're working in some kind of hybrid charity business, and even that, most people who go down that route, other than perhaps the founders, the salespeople specifically, I guess, the, well, they're still there to make the company money and to pay everyone else's wages within the company as well. There's exactly. there's a lot on the shoulders of salespeople that they don't always take into account. You're you're paying the wages of uh, accounting, you know, marketing to a certain extent. So everyone in fulfillment, that all comes from the back of you doing a great job as a salesperson. And that should be, you know, reward enough, never mind having to please every single customer. Uh, you know, you want them to be ecstatic with the product and the service, exactly. but they can only do that once they've sold, uh, yeah. once you've sold them in the first place. There's a wonderful, you remember the uh, Rocky, I think it's Rocky 3, where Rocky is kind of falling on hard times and uh, Apollo Creed is training with him on the beach. And mm-hmm. Rocky says, I'll train harder tomorrow. And Apollo goes, there is no tomorrow. Uh-huh. And in sales, there is no tomorrow. Why are we in sales? We are in business to make money today, to get a commitment today, to get information today, or to one of my favorite phrases that I, I think uh, my mentor, Max, the man who taught me sales, invented. He said, it's okay to fire the prospect. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's okay. You can't sell everybody. Not everybody is a prospect. We are in business to make money today. We have to be, you know, and, 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 you know, if you don't have that focus, if you don't have that energy, if you can't create that DNA in yourself, then you should get a regular salary job or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've got a quote just to wrap this part of the show up. I've got a quote in front of me on my wall, my big wall of quotes that some of the readers will have seen in different pictures. And I'll, I'll put a picture in the show notes of this. But it says, do not put off until tomorrow what you can do today. And that was by uh, Benjamin Franklin. Sure. And that, that sums up what I think we're saying here of uh, closing what, well, you should be closing every call. There should be a next action on every email and, and what you can do today matters. Because, well, as stupid as it sounds, you might not be here tomorrow to, to pick up where you left off. Uh, and with yeah. that, Claude, let's dive into a couple of the questions that I know you will have heard before as you're listening <laughs> to the show. And uh, look, the first one, mate, What's one book, you mentioned one before, but what's one book other than your own that you would recommend to the Salesman Podcast audience? Um, I'd love, uh, I've written several books on sales. I wrote, I like to write business novels because I think academic books are a little boring for people. We all have do- uh, books, academic books that are dog-eared. My book, uh, The Guts, uh, The Mentor Teaches the Guts Sales Method. It's a Horatio Alger rags to riches story about a guy who can't sell, meets a mentor, learns a system, and gets the girl, gets the good job, gets a good paycheck. It's a happy ending, uh, you know. And uh, I'll give that away to, to free to anybody who goes to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. Uh, I think people will get an idea that sales can be fun. It can be systematized, and we can learn the skills uh, to to have the life that we want. Is it okay to to self promote myself? <laughs> of course it is, mate. But give us another one that uh, you it didn't have to be sales it could be just uh, life in general something that's touched you as a book what's another one that you haven't written oh gosh i've um um I, well i spoke about seal dini um i've uh, i have um eric Byrne, uh games people play which is a psychology book which so goes into the behavior the emotion of selling you know, people buy things emotionally. They justify it intellectually. Dr. Eric Byrne uh, wrote that book, Games People Play, and then his student wrote, I'm okay, you're okay. These are older books, but how you have to learn, how does the prospect feel? What kind of questions should you ask the prospect? How do you make them feel good while during the sales process? And these books help with help me enormously with that. Amazing. And Claude, one final question before you tell us a little bit more about the services that you offer and, uh, and your books and everything else. And that is, if you could go back in time and speak to your younger self, what would be one piece of advice you'd give him to help him become better at sales? Oh, wow. Learn, find somebody who is doing it successfully, doing it mm-hmm. honestly, 
and is willing to be accountable. Um, I train in a very unusual way. I train one on one and I I'm only successful. I was the former world's worst salesman. I was horrible at it. And I met this wonderful older gentleman who was just brilliant at sales, financially very successful. I ended up fetching coffee and bagels for him all the time. And I, I was around, I was able to be in the environment of a genius who could pick up the phone and turn it into gold. He knew how to give good phone, Will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, if I could have done it all over again, I would have found this one person. Uh, I believe in seminars and books, but most of the stuff we get is uh, motivation rather than perspiration. Learning, learning from someone who's actually doing it, to me, is the way I learn. And mm -hmm. that, that would be my best advice to people. Find somebody you respect who's accountable, not just taking your money, but someone who talks to you. Uh, one of my things I do on my marketing is I tell people, call me. I answer my own phone. I don't know anybody else who does that, Will. <laughs> and why not? And why? Why? Because that seems silly that that's a, a differentiator for you. But why do you think you can do it and other people can't? I don't know. Because I think they want to take and not give. And I yep. think in order... In order to, uh, I'm a secret. Nobody knows who Claude Diamond is. They may not know I'm a good sales trainer. They may not know I'm a good person and that I return phone calls. I keep my appointments. I've got to bridge that gap. And the only way to do that is get them to call me, give away free books like I've done to anybody who goes to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, or something. Get, you've got to bridge that and, and make them, and I don't know. I like people. I like, if I will, the bottom line is if I speak to enough people today, it keeps Mrs. Diamond very happy. <laughs> and Claude, with that there, mate, uh, is there anything else on your website that you want to share? We'll link to everything we've talked about so far. Uh, and do you want to tell us a little bit about the gut sales method and, and any products that you offer? I, um, you know, they can go to my webpage. Everything is on there. Go to my YouTube page. I have mm -hmm. over 200 free videos on YouTube. Uh, uh, just on sales and learning how to qualify, ask questions, marketing. I love using the technology. I talk a lot about using Meerkat, Periscope, using social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, I get all the leads I need. It's, this is the best time in the world to be in sales, Will. It's, it, it, I used to spend $10,000 a month on marketing and now I spend nothing if I putting out good content to people and talking to them. And yes, I do answer my own phone. Love it. Love it, Claude. Well, I just want to say thank you for your time today, mate. Really appreciate it. We'll have you back on to talk more about the technology side of things in the future for sure. I'd love to. And, and I want to thank you for coming on the Salesman Podcast. Well, thank you. This was It went too fast, didn't it? <laughs> for sure, it did. This was great. Thank you. Cheerio for now. Let me just stop recording.